Always remember to do your own research as some of the tools that I'm about to show in this series are very new. When I started making NFTs back in 2021, the space was new and still evolving. There weren't many NFT creation tools available. A lot has changed since then, and now we have so many options. Even so, the tools can still be over technical and very hard to navigate, making it difficult for artists to create NFTs. That's why, as an artist, I'm making this series to test and review different NFT platforms to help other artists find the tools that will best fit their needs. Happy 2025, everyone. I hope it's going to be such an amazing year for you. And, um, you know, I thought to myself, what would be the perfect way to start the year regarding my channel? And that is to take a step back, to kind of look at the whole ecosystem uh, when it comes to Web3 and see what tools are available for artists to use. And I'm very excited because as an artist, when I create and I want to create an NFT, I usually use code because I'm used to that. But not many artists out there can code or knows um, how to do a lot of technical things. And what a great way to test out these platforms by actually creating an NFT on each and seeing what the experience is like. This is not a tutorial. I'm going to be creating an NFT. The goal for me is to see which platforms I'm going to use in the future. And I hope with this, you get some value too. So let's look at the first platform, which is, of course, OpenSea. So OpenSea has been around since the day that I have found out about NFTs. They have surely uh, progressed and upgraded the app and made it very efficient and a lot of changes. But the last time I really created any NFT with OpenSea was back in 2021. So I want to give it a go. I want to see what the experience is like and we'll rate it after the video. I guess let's just jump right in. So I've got my MetaMask wallet set up. I think these days you can use various wallets, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, if you want to create an NFT, I guess we'll need to go to login or let's follow what they say. We're going to click on create and it asks us to connect our wallet and we can connect this wallet. Okay, finding some messages. And I guess we are in. Okay, so right off the bat, this feels quite nice, uh, fresh, I must say, and very easy so far. Uh, we are presented with these two options to create a drop or a collection or an item. So a drop is something like a new project uh, that usually happens on a specific date and time and the items will only be revealed after the purchase. So this is like those mysterious drops, right? Maybe something has a, a rarity and you want to reveal it um, after it's purchased, I guess. And then we get to create a collection or item. So create a new NFT collection or add an NFT to an existing one. I guess this is the one we want to go for. As I said, I want to focus on the artist that has created something and they have it as a digital format and I want to make it into an NFT. So we're going to click on this one, collection or item. Okay, welcome to OpenSea. Terms and conditions by connecting your wallet, you agree. Okay, now we can go ahead and create. It does say here, once your item is minted, you will not be able to change the information. This is important because NFTs, they are immutable. These things live on the blockchain and once they mint it, the information is in decentral storage. So be aware of that. Um, you know, use your own IP, you an artist, use your own stuff, right? Um, anyway, so we get to upload media files. It's pretty cool to see that we can upload JPEGs. PNGs, GIFs, SVGs, and even uh, MP4s, and even files up to 50 megabytes, so that's pretty big. I assume that we put the artwork in this spot. That's what I guess, because here is the collection. So just something to understand for new artists. Usually you create a collection, which acts as a container, or think of it as a category section, right? Uh, but a collection can have many different NFTs, whether it is single NFTs or a series of NFTs. So it's just basically grouping them. Um, so yeah, basically I do have some test data. Um, this is my actual artist logo. I just put the word test on it because if this is going to go on the main chain, I just want to be able to identify this as test. This is also one of my lino cuts that I scanned in and I would like to make as the NFT. 
So seeing that we do have this, I'm going to plop it in there and just wait for it to load. And uh, what's next? The NFT's name, the supply, and the description, and also this collection. So I see if we don't have a collection, we'll try this out. Now it looks like we need to create the collection uh, that this NFT is going to be a part of first. Here we go, we need to create the collection. So we give it a name, Daniel's Lino Art. And for the token symbol, it's suggesting DLA. I'm going to change this to be D Art. All right, so now let's go and upload the logo. I'm just gonna drag that in there. That is perfect. And now we get to select the chain, the blockchain that this collection is gonna be on. That is quite nice that you get to select the blockchain right here. It's quite convenient, I must say. Do we get to choose Ethereum, Base? Uh, let's see some of the other options. Whoa, there's a lot. So we get to choose any of these chains, right? Polygon, uh, Psy, Blast, there's so many. Now, the thing here is if you're an artist, you really need to think about why you wanna have your art live on a particular chain. I have always been fond of Ethereum, mainly because from a developer's point of view, but I guess there are various chains, which I'll make another video on why certain chains are better than others uh, for artists specifically. However, for this video, I don't wanna break the bank. So I'm gonna choose a cheaper chain. So I see base is gonna be a bit cheaper there as well. Um, but yeah, uh, on these other chains, I always have loved Polygon just because it's so affordable to deploy. Uh, things on Polygon as well. So I'm gonna keep it to Polygon. I guess now we go and say continue and it's going to start the deploying process. Now, I don't have any Polygon, so I need to probably go and get some uh, before we can complete this process. So let me go and get some Polygon. 10 Polygon in here now, and that should be enough, right? So let's click on continue and follow the steps. That's gonna ask us that we need to pay this fee. The network fee is gonna be that. We're gonna say continue and then deploying your contract. I must say so far, it, the process is really smooth. Wow, and it's being created. This is really, really cool. Um, I have to say very smooth process so far. Uh, so, so far so good, I guess, right? And now here it gives us the two options. So it kind of feels like uh, I was ripped away from that other screen we were on, but I guess we can either view the collection or create the NFT and then also set creator earnings. And we can view it on Polygon, of course, on the Polygon scan. But let's go ahead and click on create NFT. So, okay, cool. We are back. We are back here and uh, we can see there is our Lino Art collection now, which we can now start adding uh, NFT. It's interesting that I see that it's an ERC uh, 115. Um, cool. All right. That's pretty nice. Um, it's interesting just because we didn't have to go and make these choices, which is quite convenient for an artist because it's really technical, right? So OpenSea is uh, abstracting a lot of that. Also, I think it was really affordable because we have still 9.97 polygon left after creating this collection. That's nice. It's a huge difference. Um, of course, polygon was always affordable, but back in 2021, the things were so expensive just to create a collection. Um, but yeah, polygon that time was also nice. Now time to go and upload the artwork. And again, this is the artwork I'm going to upload. It is called enjoy life and it's a lino cut. Again, I just put the test over here so that um, it's just clear that this is a test and not the actual one, uh, one of my artworks. Well, it is one of my artworks, but um, I just put test over it. Okay, cool. Now we need an artwork name and the name of my NFT will be Enjoy Life. Now also had a description. Great, and now we can look at the supply. So. You can actually increase the supply of this existing piece. So if I wanted to have 10 of this, um, by the way, it's a candle that's sitting on a swing under this tree. So if I 
wanted to have 10 of these, then I could have 10 of the same one. But I just want one. So that is basically what the supply is. I don't have an external link. So if there's a website of some sort, I can use an external link. And then traits. The traits are extra metadata, right? And let's add one. Let's add one and say, well, we've got a type, which is going to be the medium of my piece. And I'm going to say, this is a lino cut. So I'm just going to add one trait saying medium lino. And you can add more, I guess. Yeah, you can add more, but we just want that one. And this all looks good. Let's go and create. So I'm going to click on create. And again, blockchain, you always have to interact with your wallet and um, sign things and so forth. What is this going to cost us? Uh, this is going to be the network fee. Okay, confirm. And it's nice, they show you the steps, uh, what's actually happening in the process. Now, our item is being minted on the main Polygon network. This is extremely exciting and surprisingly convenient. So far, I've been waiting for almost a minute. And I guess this is because uh, with blockchain, you get kind of the speed of what your transactions go through. So if you put a higher gas fee, it's gonna you know complete quicker. So I didn't pay attention to that. So now I'm basically at the mercy of the blockchain and maybe if it's a bit congested, it's gonna take a bit longer. So I'm gonna give it a second. I'm gonna go and get something to drink and I'll come back. Hopefully we'll have an NFT inside of that collection we just created. It's been a while and I did what the page said I mustn't do. I refreshed the page. And the reason why I did that, I waited so long and I confirmed that the confirmation went through on my MetaMask. So it didn't progress me to a congratulations or you are done page. However, I reloaded OpenSea. And now if I click on my profile, so if I click on profile, and I go down, I can see that the collection is here. And there is the Enjoy Life NFT. So from this point onwards, I can now click on this NFT and basically list it for sale. Um, I can see there is the trait, the medium lino that we've added. So yeah, we have successfully created an NFT and that actually was very, very fast. I know I spoke a lot, through the process, but literally this could take a few minutes. Now, I just wanna see, so if we go to the profile and we click on created, I guess, I wanna get to my collections. Oh, there we go. So there's the collection. So now we're on the collection itself. And usually you could now kind of customize the collection. You could uh, add a banner up, up at the top here. So um, I guess you can click on these dots and then edit collection. So you can now go ahead and add a description for the collection. You can add categories, um, tokens that payment can be taken in, creator earnings you can set up. So it's like really a nice way to create your NFTs and then basically have your little storefront, um, which is your collection to make your NFTs available to the world, right? Your artworks. And I think this was a pretty smooth process. Okay, so now it's time to rate our experience. Keep in mind, this is not rating the company or the entire product as we only had a glimpse of the experience creating an NFT. So basically for user friendliness, I wanted to put this at incredibly easy to use. The only reason why I didn't is because of this Web3 jargon and the understanding that there's processes with wallets that need to go through a step-by-step -step signing process. Even though OpenSea made it so smooth and almost completely flawless, right? The flow where we get to add an NFT, then a collection, and then it goes and creates it with our wallet where we have to sign messages. The fact that we still have to go and sign messages, which will probably never changed, right? Um, and maybe in the future is still confusing to someone who is new. So I can't put it at incredibly easy to use because someone that's new is still not going to find it incredibly easy. They're going to maybe find it easy to use, but not incredibly easy.
And that is just due to um, maybe just how blockchain works, right? So it's not maybe totally OpenSea's fault um, that these processes have to happen. However, I have to say that the UI is extremely beautiful. The flow just flows. Um, it's very automated. Um, apart from that one hiccup where we had to wait forever and then reload the page, it was flawless, like I said, and we were able to create an NFT and set up our storefront in a matter of minutes. And so for that, I think it deserves a spot between incredibly easy to use and easy to use. Now, moving on to customization, although we haven't experienced all the options that we have to customize, I am fairly aware of the things such as the description, the uh, titles, the backgrounds of our, of our storefronts that we could change. And of course, things like selecting what type of contract we're going to deploy. Um, all those kind of things are customizations. Even the fact that we get to select so many nice um, chains that we can deploy to, that is customization. However, um, as far as I know, we can't customize the underlying smart contract and that's okay. In the sense where you an artist and you want to actually just make NFTs and you don't want to dive into the code, you don't need that level of customization. So I feel like it's highly flexible and also moderately adaptable. I think it's a good spot to put this in. So not necessarily a bad thing as if we look at the customization of NFTs, it could really stretch the bounds, right? This scale speaks to anything from maybe not even changing the title, all the way to coding a separate kind of protocol with this NFT. So it's a really vast scale um, for us to put this in. So I feel like this is quite high where it's at and also justifies the user friendliness, right? Because if this was very customizable, the user friendliness would have also had to come down um, whenever you deal with that level of customization. And to the last point, will I use it myself? Well, based on today's experience, yes, absolutely. I'm more than likely to kind of go and use OpenSea to create an NFT collection in the future if I have made an art series. So yes, I, I would likely consider using OpenSea. As always, thank you for watching my video. I just want to remind you, if you are someone who loves NFTs and collecting art pieces and you would like to collect one of my artworks, you can do so on the secondary market. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers for now.